Okay, hello. Today we're going to take a look at uh, revisiting an idea that we've already seen uh, this year, which is the idea of what redox reactions are and why they are important to us. So I've got some examples of some redox reactions up here. By the way, this big looking crust up here is something called bauxite, which is uh, where your aluminum came from. Uh, all the other ones I know you can recognize. But uh, we're going to take a look at what uh, redox is, how do we define redox, how do we recognize redox. I know you know some of this. And then we're going to take a look at how to identify reduction versus oxidation, and then how to identify reducing and oxidizing agents, a little bit of a different plan here. So first of all, why are we studying redox reactions? Just a reminder that redox reactions are probably some of the most important real world kinds of examples of, of reactions that we do. Um, a lot of the actual functional chemistry that we use, both in your body as well as out in your world, tends to be redox reactions. They're not as simple, so we don't a lot of times do them, you know, in a Chem 1 class like we're doing. Uh, you know, double displacement reactions are so much easier. Uh, but this really is real-world chemistry. So rusting of your car, um, converting chemical to electrical energy, like in your batteries, uh, being able to get iron or, or aluminum, for that matter, out of rock, um, burning something either inside your cells or out in your house, or even just doing the simple act of being green, photosynthesis, are all examples of redox reactions that are kind of critical uh, to us understanding our world. So it's kind of important to know how these reactions work. So in terms of a definition of them, uh, first of all, the real definition is a uh, redox reaction is a reaction in which electrons are transferred. Simple as that. If you can tell if electrons are transferred, how do you know? You can't see an electron moving back and forth. Well, the way that you can tell is if charges change. The next video, I'll show you more about how to identify with whether those charges are. Uh, for this particular case, there's some simple rules that you'll be able to use. Um, but you're going to be looking at whether or not things change. Um, does a charge increase or does a charge decrease? Basic rule number one, if it's an element, its charge is equal to zero. So magnesium is equal to zero. And oxygen, even though it's O2, but oxygen is a gas. Anything that's an element, its charge is zero. And then when we take a look at over on the other side here, we can see that this is now an ionic compound, magnesium oxide. It's the beautiful reaction that's pictured there. Uh, we've burned it in lab before. You know how bright that gets. Uh, but magnesium oxide is a little bit different, right? In magnesium now, it's acting magnesium ion is a 2 plus, and oxygen ion, or oxide, is a 2 minus. So we can see that one has gone from a 0 to a 2 plus, and one has gone from a 0 to a 2 minus. So therefore, something has gained electrons, become more negative, or something has lost electrons become more positive. And that's what redox is. I want to remind you that the word redox is simply a shortening of the terms reduction and oxidation. So I like saying redox a lot better, and you'll get used to me saying that. So how do we know it's what? Um, the key here is taking a look at which one loses and which one gains. Oxidation and reduction. First of all, these two have to go hand in hand. Um, if one is losing electrons, then something else has to gain them. And if something gained them, they had to come from somewhere, and that somewhere is who lost them. So by definition, the loss of electrons is called oxidation. So magnesium here, which becomes more positive, it's lost electrons, therefore that is called oxidation. The gaining of electrons, GER, G-E-R, gaining of electrons is by definition called reduction. So oxygen here is gaining electrons. It's going from a zero to a two negative. It's gotten two more electrons. Therefore, it has been reduced. A little shortcut for you so you can remember which one's which. The one that's got the reduced charge, zero to negative two, that's a reduction. That's the reduction reaction. That's how I always remember which one's which, but you can use whatever you like. So again, one's got to gain, one's got to lose. One's oxidation, one's reduction, L-E-O, Leo, and GER, G-E-R. Loss of electrons, oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. Here's a little quick way to remember it, by the way. Leo goes GER. I know it's kind of cheesy, but it works. You won't remember, won't forget it now. So lose electrons, oxidation, gain electrons, reduction. So your turn. Take a look at these two examples here. I've got two equations on here. Copper metal plus chloride gas gives us copper two chloride. And then this is, a, I know, a little bit crazier here. You don't know how to do the charges on this one. So this is methane uh, burning an oxygen gas to give us CO2 and H2O. So what I want you to do is hit pause, and I want you to try to identify what's been oxidized and what has been reduced. In each case, it'll be the name of an element. So has copper been oxidized? Or has copper been reduced? Hit pause, and I'll come back and hit these and show you what the answers are. All right, I hope you did actually hit pause, so I'm not just clicking this like an idiot. But here you go. In this particular case, chlorine is reduced and copper is oxidized. Again, I attack this by looking at which one has the reduction in charge. Here, copper went from a zero, remember elements are zero, and here it's acting like a two plus. Chlorine here is also a zero, and over here it's acting like its normal ion form, one minus. So zero to negative one is a reduction, goes down the number line. From a zero to a two plus, that's an increase, that's oxidation. 
So if you take a look now at the one at the bottom, if you did it wrong, by the way, hit pause and go fix this one before you hit go again. But here's this one at the bottom. This is a good example because not everything is involved in redox in this particular case. If you take a look at it, oxygen is the one that's reduced. Again, uh, oxygen's going from a zero on the left, it's in its element form, to over on the right. And it's, yeah, it's in two different spots, but it's a negative two on both sides, therefore its charge is reduced. That's the reduction reaction. Carbon, on the other hand, goes from a four minus on the left to a four plus on the right. It's increasing, therefore that's oxidation. So now you've got carbon is reduced, uh, sorry, carbon is oxidized, oxygen is reduced, there's our redox, and hydrogen here is basically just observing. It's sort of a spectator in this particular case. It's a one plus on the left, and it's a one plus on the right, so it isn't involved in that, and that's okay. All right, kind of going the next step. Um, when we're talking about oxygen especially, oxygen is that filthy stripper. She's always taken oxygen, uh, taking electrons away from something else, and that's why she's a stripper. I know it sounds bad, but she's stripping electrons, becoming more negative. In other words, oxygen becomes reduced, but this process of stripping electrons from things is called oxidation. It makes sense. They're being attacked by oxygen, if you want to think of it that way. So oxygen is the classic oxidizing agent. It oxidizes other stuff, attacks it, and then steals its electrons. So that's why those other things are considered to be oxidized. They're losing electrons. But oxygen itself, and this is the weird part, oxygen itself is actually reduced because it's stealing them from somewhere else, it's actually gaining electrons. So a reducing agent, by the way, is the opposite. Uh, a reducing agent is something that actually reduces other things. It gives them electrons. And in the process, because the reducing agent is giving electrons away, the reducing agent is actually oxidized. It's kind of backwards how this works. The re oxidizing agent is reduced. The reducing agent is oxidized. So again, it's a little bit strange how this works, and it's kind of one of those, you know, kind of, I don't know, backward sort of examples, kind of like an acid becomes a conjugate base. I don't know how you want to remember that, but an oxidizing agent becomes reduced. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here, and this is, again, a good opportunity for you to pause and take a look at what this is. So if we take a look at this top one, I'm going to do this one first, I'm going to do the second one, and I'm going to do this one third. So go ahead and hit pause. See if you can figure out what's oxidized, what's reduced, what's your oxidizing agent, or maybe your reducing agent. So go ahead and hit pause, and I'm going to go through and do them in that particular order. Okay. So if you take a look at this example right here, magnesium plus oxygen gives us magnesium oxide. This is that one that we saw early on. Which one's which? All right, well, magnesium is giving them away. Oxygen is stealing them. Oxygen is the oxidizing agent. It's being reduced. Magnesium is, see, gain of electrons is reduction. Loss of electrons is oxidation. See, it's losing its electrons. That's why it's oxidized. So magnesium is oxidized, and the other thing is going to be the oxidizing agent. Oxygen is being reduced. Magnesium is the reducing agent. Kind of works out. It's a little bit weird. On the bottom here, we got sodium and chlorine. Again, if you got stuck on that first one, hit pause and try this one again. Which one's gaining and which one's losing? So we take a look at sodium. Sodium is the one that's losing electrons. Loss of electrons, Leo. Loss of electrons is oxidation. So it's giving its electron away to chlorine. So it's oxidized. That means chlorine here is acting like the stripper. So it's got to be the oxidizing agent. Chlorine as a result, by the time it comes over here, is reduced. And sodium is the reducing agent. Okay, last example. This is iron metal and copper ions forming iron ions and copper metal. What's going to be the oxidizing and reducing? Which one's the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent? So if you take a look at this, iron goes from 0 to 2 plus. Copper goes from 2 plus to 0. Therefore, copper is reduced and iron is oxidized. Again, that's how I take a look at it. I look for the one that's reduced first. For me, that's the easiest way to remember it. So now you can tell which one's the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. It should be the opposite term, right? So if iron is oxidized, it must be the reducing agent. Copper that's reduced, it's got to be the oxidizing agent. So there you go. Here's your big ideas from today. What's a redox reaction? Redox reaction is something, uh, it's a reduction oxidation, right? Electrons are transferred from one thing to another, and you can recognize that by the change in charges of different things. Um, you cannot have oxidation without reduction, or vice versa, because if one's gaining, the other one has to be losing, or if one's losing, another one has to be gaining. They've got to go together. There's two mnemonics. The word mnemonic simply means little memory devices. A mnemonic number one is Leo goes Ger. Loss of electrons is oxidation, and gain of electrons is reduction. 
And the second one is how I identify it. Uh, the reduced element is the one that has a reduced charge. If it goes from 0 to 2 minus, that's reduction. If it goes from 4 plus to 2 plus, that's still a reduction, and those would both be examples of that. And then I just know, well, the other one has to be the one that's oxidized. There you go. Um, and then last but not least, the reducing agent, the oxidizing agent, these are reactants. So a reducing agent is the reactant that is oxidized, and the oxidizing agent is the one that is reduced. I know it's backwards, but I didn't make up the names. Sorry about that. See you in class tomorrow.